We're going to now get into linear equations in two variables. A linear equation is something that is usually written in this format. 2x plus 1. Okay? Something like this. And usually it's written in y is equal to something x plus some minus something or whatever. It may be. Okay, this is what a linear equation looks like. Okay, so let's look at page 407. Okay, so something about volcanoes there. The Hawaiian volcano Mauna Loa has erupted many times. In 1859, lava from the volcano traveled 32 miles to the Pacific Ocean at an average speed of four miles per hour. In example two, you'll see how to use an equation in two variables to describe the flow of the lava toward the ocean. Okay. An example of an equation in two variables is, and it has 2x minus y plus five, okay? 2x minus y is equal to five. Okay, well, kind of looks like this. Right. In order to make this guy look like this, I can add y on both sides. And this guy would cancel out. I would get 2x is equal to 5 plus y. Then I could subtract 5 from both of the sides. This cancels out. Now on this, I only have y is equal to 2x minus 5, which is kind of what this guy looks like over here, right? Right. So I can do a little more manipulation. I can eventually get there to make it look like this. Okay. Example number one. Example number one, it gives us, it tells us to see if a point is on the line. Is the point, does it satisfy the equation? Tell whether the order pair is a solution of 2x minus y is equal to 5. So example number one, we have 2x minus y is equal to 5. Again, this is a linear equation in two variables. So I have two variables. I have y, x, and y, right? So I have a first point is 1 and negative 3. So the first point is 1 and negative 3. What does this one mean? Anybody, what does this one mean? Remember in our coordinate system when we put one and negative three, the one is the, which coordinate? This would be the X coordinate, right? So this is your X, this is your X here. And this second one is your Y, okay? So what it's saying is that your X is equal to one, Y is equal to negative three. And if it's on this line, or if it's on this function, then it's going to work. This equation is going to work. If it's not, it's not going to work, right? So let's put two. So what I have here, now where x is, I need to put 1. So where x is, I'm going to put 1. Let's see, times 1. Where y is, I'm going to put minus 3. So I'm going to put minus 3 here. So two times one is two, negative negative three is plus three, and indeed two plus three is equal to five, which means that this point satisfies this equation, which means that it's on the same line. Okay, so it says whether it's order pair is a solution. So the order pair is a solution, right? So on B, I have four and seven. So the four stands for what? X. Y. And then the seven stands for? Y. So X and Y, right? So where X is, I'm going to put the four. Then where Y is, I'm going to put the seven and see if it's going to be five. So I have eight minus seven, not five, right? Eight minus seven is one. Okay, so this does not work. So this is not a solution to this guy. Okay. Okay. 
What if x was equal to zero? What does y have to be? Can we figure out what y is when x is equal to zero? Two x minus y is equal to five. Uh, y would have to be uh, negative five. Y would have to be negative five, right? Because then you'd have two times zero, then you'd have negative five. And yeah, that's zero, and this is negative, it becomes positive. So five is equal to five. So it would go through this point, or this is a solution to that. Okay. That's example number one. Number two. Number two. Okay, so now we're going to talk about that uh, volcano here. The lava's distance in miles from the ocean t hours after it left the volcano can be approximated using that thing. Make a table of solutions for the equation. So the distance it traveled, is equal to 32 minus 14, 32 minus 14. So they want to make a table here. So the way you make a table is you're going to go ahead and set t, and then you're going to solve for d. So when t is equal to zero, what is d going to be? This would be zero, right? This kind of goes away when it's zero. So D is going to be equal to 32. Right? When T is equal to one, what do we have? We're going to have 32 minus four times one, and that's D. So what is that? Past story. Four. No, this is four. So it's going to be 32 minus four, which is 28. 28. Good job. Two, when t is equal to two, I'm going to get 32 minus four times two. So I get 32 minus eight, which is. Twenty-four. When t is equal to three, I get thirty-two minus four times three. I have twelve. Uh, thirty-two minus twelve, which is twenty. Thirty-two minus twelve is twenty. Let's do one more. Four. When t is equal to four, I get thirty-two minus four times four. Four times four is what? This is 16, so 32 minus 16 is 16 also. Okay. Okay. So look at what's happening. So as the hours go by, the more hours you go by, right? You go from 32 will be 32 miles or a few away. Miles. 32 miles away from the ocean. 32 miles away from the ocean. An hour went by and now you're 28 miles away. Two hours goes by, you're 24. Three hours go by, you're 20. So what's happening? Every hour, the distance to the ocean is getting what? So shorter or longer? Shorter, right? You're going from 32, 28. How shorter is it getting every hour? Four hours. I mean, four, four miles, right? So where does that four show up in our equation? Hmm. 
be right here, right? Minus four. This is the four you're subtracting every hour. That's the minus four. That is the rate for how quickly each hour you're getting closer and closer to the ocean. What does a 32 mean? The 32 means that the initial distance from the ocean was 32, right? In other words, if I have the, this is the volcano, and this is the ocean over here. So this would be the, the sea or the waves, by the way. <laughs> you didn't know what it meant, these are the waves. So from here to here is basically 32 miles, right? And it's going to start flowing from here, flowing from here, flowing, 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 all the way down, down, down. So every hour it gets closer and closer to the ocean, right? Every hour it gets closer and closer to the ocean. Can you see what's happening here? So that phenomena is being described using this mathematical equation. Make sense? So that's what's happening. Okay, B, how long will it take for the lava to reach the ocean? So how many hours later is it going to reach the ocean? We yeah, should do a couple more, right? We can figure it out, actually. Five would be 12. Six would be eight. Seven would be four. Eight would be zero. Right? So eight hours, right? It takes eight hours. Another way to look at that is that so distance when it reaches the ocean is going to be equal to what? Zero, right? So this is what you're solving. When I solve this is I add 14 to both sides. Divide both sides by four. This guy cancels out. T is equal to eight, right? Can you see that? Okay. So that's what you did here. Okay, example number three. So 32 here was the starting point. This was the starting point. And the negative four there was actually the rate at which, how fast it is approaching the ocean. Okay, that's what that was. In that example. Okay, so example number three. Make a table of solutions. Graph this. So we're going to graph this by again doing the same thing we just did. So when x will be y. When x is equal to zero, what is y? Can you tell me what y is when x is equal to zero? Okay. No, this guy goes to zero, right? This entire thing goes, goes away. This goes to zero, so y is equal to negative one. When x is equal to one, I have two times one minus one. So what do I get? Get one, right? Two minus one is one. When s equals to two, what do I get? Josh, two times two is four. Four minus one is three. So three would be your answer, right? So let's stop. I'll just we'll stop right here. Well, I have the three points, right? So I have three points. I have to graph this. So when I graph this, this guy is going to be which axis? What axis is this? This is the x. This guy here is going to be the y. So when x is equal to zero, right here, x is equal to zero, y is equal to negative one. So this is my first point. This is my first point right here, right? Negative one. The second point is when x is equal to one, x is equal to one. So now x is equal to one, so it's somewhere here, but y is going to be equal to one also. So it's going to be one and one. 
this point here was zero and negative one. And s equals to two, y was equal to three. S equals to two, y is going to be equal to three. Go ahead and connect these dots. Connect these dots. Right? And that is my line. I'm done. How many points do I need to draw a line? What is the least amount of points that I need? I need at least two, right? At least two, right? So the reason why I do three is just to make sure if I made a mistake. What if I do three and they're all on the same line? I'm really good to go. Okay. So that's that. The book actually does five of them. We only did three. And number three, you got there, there, so we're good. We're good to go. We're good to go. Okay, horizontal and vertical lines. The graph of the equation of y is equal to b is a horizontal line through zero and b. The graph of the equation x equal to a is a vertical line through a. So don't don't try to memorize these. Let's go ahead and talk about it and see if it makes sense. Okay, so first one was y is equal to something. So y is equal to two. Let's draw this graph. Y is equal to two. Okay, so again, we're gonna make the table, right? X and Y. Well, Mr. Strong, there's no X here, right? So when X equals to zero, guess what Y is? Y is two, always two, right? It doesn't matter what it is. When X equals to one, it's two. Whether it's a hundred, I'm two, two, I'm two, right? Because Y is equal to two, that's what the equation is. Let's go ahead and graph this. I'm obviously not gonna graph that one because hundred is like a way out there. So when X equal to zero, Y is equal to two. X equal to one, y is equal to two. X equal to two, y is equal to two. I'm just going to connect those together. So this is a horizontal line or a vertical line? This is horizontal, right? Horizontal line. So this, when you have something that looks like this, is it a horizontal line. And again, don't try to memorize this. Just think about it. And if, if you do it, it makes make sense, right? Try the other one. X equals to two. Let's try X equals to two this time. When X is equal to two, now it's the exact opposite, right? When Y is equal to zero, X equal to two. Y is equal to one. Two, two, they're all the same, right? No matter what y is, x is always two. So we graph this. Y is equal to zero, x is equal to two. Right here, y is equal to one, x equals to two. Y equals two, x equals two. You can see now this is a vertical line, right? So when x is equal to something, it's a vertical line. When y is equal to something, it's a horizontal line. So yeah, I'm not gonna go ahead and go through example number four. We kind of just did that. So let's skip that one. And in the middle, there's a paragraph there. Pastor, you want to read that for us? The equations as functions there. In the example three and four, the vertical line test shows that y is equal to x minus one and y equals three are functions while x equals negative two is not a function. A function to graph a non-vertical line is called a linear linear function. A linear function. The equation of a linear function is solved for y. The 
notation is the function form. You may find it helpful to write the equation in function form before graphing it. Good, thanks. So linear, okay, so again, we go back to the linear thing. So the first graph that we drew was like this, right? This was y is equal to 2x minus 1, I think. y was equal to 2x minus 1 on this one. If I do the vertical line test, I do the vertical line test here. Every time I do a vertical line, I am only touching one point, right? The line only touches at one point. So if it passes the vertical line test, which means this, this is a function, okay? The second one we did was a horizontal line. So in a horizontal line, I have something that looks like this. I do the vertical line test. Again, I'm only hitting one point, right? So this also passes the vertical line test. I mean, the, yeah, the vertical line test. The problem is, is if I have a, the last one we did was x equals to two, right? When we did x equals to two, it looked like this, and this was two. And now the problem with this one is I go like here, and I have a million points, and it's gonna hit all kinds of points, right? So this does not pass the vertical line test. Okay? So this is not a function. Function form, okay, we talked about, we already did this actually. The very first thing that I told you was that the function, linear function is something that looks like this. And I told you, the book said, sometimes if it's like this, it might be easier if you change this into this form. And the reason being is now I put the X in, it's easier to calculate the Y when I'm doing the table. Okay. okay, so let's see if we can do example number five, the last one, is that the last one? Yes, it is, let's see if we can do this. Example number five. X, is e X plus 2y is equal to 6. And we want to write it in function form and then graph the equation. So let's write it in function form first. So function form would be, would be has to be y is equal to something, right? So I want to solve for y here. I need to isolate the y. So I don't want the X on this side. So let's get rid of that first. Okay, now I have this two, I need to get rid of the two also. So I can divide everything by two. You get something that looks like that. So let's go ahead and put this in table form. Zero. If I put zero in here, this guy goes away. Y is going to be equal to just three. If I put two in there, what do I get? I mean, negative one half times two. What is that? Loading. Negative one half times two would be what? It's a negative number, right? It's going to be negative. It's negative times a positive. Negative times a positive is a negative. I have two, and this two cancels out, so I get one. Negative one. So this is going to be negative one plus three was two. And I give you four. So I have negative one half times four plus three. Negative one half times four is negative two plus three, so that'd be plus one. 
Can anybody tell me why I'm going by twos here? Why am I not doing zero, one, and two? Because I have this half thing right here, right? If I did one, let's see what happens. If I do one, I'm gonna get negative one half times one plus three. And I get something that's ugly that looks like this. Now I'm gonna go I have to do this. I'm gonna change the three to six over two, then add this together to be negative five over two. And this is kind of hard to draw also, right? So negative two and a half. If I go like this, I get nice even integers. Okay. So let's go ahead and draw the, uh, so we were at, y is equal to negative one half x plus three. Let's go ahead and draw the graph. On x equal to zero, y is equal to three. When when x equals to two, y is equal to two. X equals to four. I get one. Connect those three dots. That's what it looks like. Okay. You guys did this stuff in mid-high math? Did you draw graphs? We drew graphs, so we didn't do this. You didn't do the tables and stuff? No. If you're following how I'm doing it though, right? So you put in the zero, one, and two, find out what the y's are, plot it, and then just graph it, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're done for today.